On today's show, I'm going to show you how I made this plush tufted vanity stool for my new closet that will not only be a beautiful seat while I'm putting on makeup and getting dressed, but will also work as a great little storage unit. Coming up next, see how I made this using a crate and some old curtains. In my new closet, I made a couple of vanity areas on these shelves and I want to be able to sit here to do my makeup. I really love the look of this little silver vanity stool and I love the idea of having storage like this bench. This one is my favorite because it's really elegant but it also has storage too. But not only were most of these a little expensive but they also were too short for my vanity. The area that holds my makeup is a little high off the ground so I would need something that was like a tall stool to be able to sit and do my makeup. I actually really couldn't find one that was tall enough so I decided to try to make one that would look the way I like and would work perfect for my closet. To make my vanity storage stool from Walmart I picked up this 12 and a half by 9 and a half by 18 inch wooden crate, wood glue, a 1 and 1 fourth inch foam mattress pad, quote batting, metallic silver rope trim, a couple of pins or clamps, and small shank buttons. From Lowe's I got five 18 by two and a half by one fourth inch pieces of wood. I also got four end table legs, a pack of hardware to attach the legs, a whole piece of masonite. I asked them to cut it down to the size of my crate so I got five pieces of this. And I got small brad nails. In addition you'll need a little sandpaper and quite a few pieces of corrugated cardboard. You'll also need other supplies to put this together like a screwdriver, staple gun, hammer, hot glue gun, scissors, exacto knife, a marker and tape measure. Okay so I'm going to use this crate as my seat and storage container. So I had a large piece of masonite cut into pieces that fit the width of my crate because I want to use it to reinforce the bottom and to use it for the top part of my seat. Since I will be attaching legs to the bottom of this, I'm going to attach the masonite to the bottom to give it a solid surface. First I'm spreading wood glue on the bottom of the crate. Then I'm using small brad nails to attach the masonite to the bottom of the crate. I'm putting nails on each corner first and then all the way around. I got four end table legs. These were about six dollars each and to attach these I'm using straight top plates for table legs. These came four in a pack with the screws and I am going to place these at each corner of the box and I'm positioning them so that the screws will go through the masonite into the wood on the side panel and on the panels that go towards the center of the box. As you can see these table legs already have screws, built in screws at the bottom that fit and screw right into the plates. But before I attach these legs I want to cover the bottom with material. This material I got from Goodwill. These are curtains. It was a set of four curtains that I bought for six dollars and I found that they were too short for my windows. So this silver material will be perfect for my vanity stool. So I cut out a piece of material that will cover the bottom and part of the sides. I want to cover it up to the first wooden bar. I also want to hide these metal plates so I'm covering the whole bottom. So I'm just going to fold the ends under and use my staple gun to attach the material. Now that I have the bottom completely covered, like I said I don't want the metal plates to show but I do want to be able to screw the legs on. So I'm going to just poke a hole in through the material where the hole is for the screw of the leg and then I can just screw the leg in. I really like the way the side panel that comes from the legs at the top of the bench look. So I wanted to do something like that on my piece. So I got a few pieces of two and a half by one fourth inch wood pieces and I measured the distance between the two legs 
I cut the pieces to size with a electric saw and I am going to um, place these pieces in between the legs. So this is really snug so I'm just going to hammer it down into place until it's flush with the legs. I did that on all four sides and I'm going to take some wood glue and put a line of glue in the corners of each piece. After I do that, I'm going to use my finger to smooth the glue out so that there's a nice transition between the legs and the panel. And I'm doing this on each corner on the inside and the outside. Next, I want to spray paint my legs and the bottom part silver. So I'm just going to slip some paper in here under and around the legs to protect the material portion. Now that the glue is dry, I'm taking this outside to spray paint it. I'm using Rust-Oleum Paint Plus Primer Silver Spray Paint. And I'm painting all the legs, the inside, outside, and the panels on the side. I did a couple of coats of this. Afterwards, you could coat it with varnish to protect the silver paint. Now while the bottom part of my seat is drying, I'm going to use the other three pieces of masonite to start on the top cover and cushion of my seat. I cut four pieces of the wood that I used for the panels on the bottom to match the length of my top panel. And I'm going to use these pieces of wood in between two pieces of masonite for my top panel to reinforce my seat. I'm putting wood glue on my pieces first. And I want to make sure the first piece and the last piece are flush with the end. And then the other pieces are evenly spaced. So now I'm going to use wood glue to sandwich another piece of masonite on top. And then the staple gun to attach the pieces. And just to make sure my top seat cover is extra stiff and strong, I'm going to put another piece of masonite on top of that. So again, I'm going to use the glue and a staple gun for this. After cutting those pieces of wood, I had this much left out of the five pieces. So I'm going to use this to make corners on the inside of my seat top cover. I'm going to divide each piece into four and use the electric saw to cut eight small pieces. So I drew lines on my top cover piece to show where the inside of my storage box portion starts. So I'm going to use these pieces to make corners so that my top seat will fit inside the box without sliding off. I'm putting glue at the bottom and I'm going in about an eighth of an inch inside the line just to give it a little leeway. And with these pieces I'm making an L shape on each corner. So while that dries, I'm going to go back to my bottom half and start making the tufted sides of my storage container. I cut four pieces of corrugated cardboard to fit each side of my unit. To make these sides tufted, I'm using this one and a half inch thick mattress foam. I'll be using the hot glue to glue on two pieces for each side. For the longest pieces, I'm measuring and marking three places to put my buttons. I made sure they're centered and evenly spaced. I'm pushing scissors all the way down to I feel the cardboard and I'm cutting a square shape around the mark. And I'm using my scissors to pull out the excess foam in the center to make a hole at each mark. Now I'm cutting a piece of batting that has about three or four inches excess all the way around. And I'm going to poke my fingers into the holes so that I could feel the holes when I put the material over this. I'm covering the batting with the same silver material. And I'll be using these small shank buttons, but I'm also going to glue these diamond gems that I already had on top to make it a little more glam. I'm also using a medium sized yarn needle. And what I want to do is thread the needle through the button down into the hole and all the way through the back of the cardboard. Give it at least a fourth of an inch space and go back in through the cardboard and through that same hole and out to the top. 
And then I want to push that button all the way down into the hole and pull the thread through until there's a little bit left at the bottom and tie a knot. And I'm going to pull that knot tight so that the button goes all the way in. And I'm going to make a couple of knots while the button is pushed down. And then I'll cut the thread pretty close to the button and sort of hide it under the button. Ideally, you want to have gray thread or whatever thread you're using um, the color of your material. But I don't have gray, so I used white. So after I cut it, I'm going to sort of hide that piece of thread underneath the button. After you got all the buttons in, now it's time to staple the material to the back. And I could have used a little more material on the sides. I'm going to staple the sides first by pulling the material as tight as I can around the back and using the staple gun. If at all possible while stapling the top part, you want to fold the material so that it looks as if there are buttons going diagonally above the center buttons. So I want to position this material the way I want and then I'm going to pull it in the back and staple it. And then just pull and staple all the way around. So this is what I have on the front and I cut the excess material on the back. Now what I want to do is put a little hot glue on the thread here just so it doesn't pull through the holes. Now I'm going to set this aside and do the other three panels. For the short panels I use two buttons instead of three and on the back of these all of them I'm hot gluing the material down flat just so that it's flat when I attach it to the crate. Okay, so before I attach the panels to the crate, I am going to hot glue material around the top and sides of the crate. I put strips of material around the parts that will show after I put the panels on. So I'm putting wood glue on the panels and some hot glue around the edges. And then I'm going to line this panel up with the edges and I'm going to use these plastic clamps to keep the top in place while I use some little small brads to nail the bottom part down. If you have creases, you could hide the brads inside the folds and then you won't be able to see the nails. And after I do the bottom, I'm going to remove the clamps and do the top. And this is what it looks like with all four sides. Okay, so now I'm going to start working on the top cover cushion. And I'm going to do it the same way. I cut out a piece of cardboard that was the same size as the top opening. But this time I'm going to use three pieces of foam to make it extra cushy since I'm sitting on this part. And since the crate cushions come out a little more than the top, so I'm going to need to put some cushions around this top piece to make it a little bit wider. So I cut some panels of foam that were a little bit longer than the sides and I'm hot gluing those all the way around. So it looks something like this and that top piece that I made for the seat will sit right inside of here and I can wrap the cushion around that. Okay so after I added the material and buttons to this one I am going to attach this to my hard top cover. By the way, as you can see, I did decide to spray paint this cover silver. So now that the hard part of the cover is attached to the cushion, I can staple the material and cushion onto the hard back. So I just decided to cover up that whole inside of the cover with material to cover up the staples and those extruding corners. So now this is what the top looks like. Now the last thing I need to do is to cover the inside. So I cut four pieces of cardboard to fit exactly inside this piece and I want to cover that with material. So I'm just going to cut a piece of batting to attach to this to make it a little bit cushy. Then cover that with material and just hot glue that to the back. So I did that for all four panels plus the bottom panel. 
which I made a little more cushy by adding a couple more pieces of batting. To attach the panels, again I'm using wood glue and some hot glue. And you could use some little nails on this if you had to to keep it in place. But I put the side panels in first and I pushed the bottom piece in last. I found this pretty silver rope ribbon at Walmart and as a final touch, I'm going to put this around in the folds as a pretty shimmering trim. I'm also adding it on the side corners. And now with that, I think I am done. Now I have a beautiful little seat that is tall enough to reach my makeup. And I have extra storage to keep some of my closet treasures. So I was able to get that glam look that I like that was more functional and worked a lot better for my new closet. Stay tuned next time and I'll show you how I put the whole closet together. Check out my new Etsy store where I just added new products and everything is drastically reduced. I also added new project guide booklets with full color step-by-step -step instructions for some of your favorite projects including the Bohemian Crystal Table Lamp. All digital downloads just $3. And check out my Amazon page where you can pick up my Your House a Home metallic multi-surface acrylic paint with eight beautiful shimmering colors. You can mix millions of colors and create endless home beauty for indoor and outdoor projects. And from Amazon, pick up my Book of Elegant Home Crafts Volume 1 with all your favorite projects together in one big beautiful colored step-by-step -step instruction book. On my Amazon page, you'll see all my favorite crafting tools and supplies used on this show and you can add them all to your cart for the one click fast and easy shopping and delivery convenience of Amazon. I'll be working every day to make crafting fun and easy for you. Follow me at Your House of Home and Your House of Home TV on all social media for extra home, food, and gardening tips.